Hello guys, we are back with our next lecture. In this lecture, let us go through the analysis of algorithms. So what are the types of analysis, how the analysis is done, on what basis and everything. We'll be just having an introduction and in our future lectures, we'll be discussing about types and everything guys. Okay. Okay. So let us start with what is an analysis and why we will be doing it. So basically analysis, okay, analysis of an algorithm. We'll be doing analysis for an algorithm here. Okay. So you will be checking whether the algorithm is best with respect to, so I'll be just giving some examples on basis of what you will be doing. So whether it is best for space, like when you are designing something, you need to occupy less amount of space and it should take less amount of time. Like it should occupy less time and less space or space and time. Okay. And similarly, we will be considering bandwidth, the capacity, the resistors, the power consumption and various things, right? When you are analyzing something, we'll be considering all this. And among these, the main entities are nothing but the time and space. If you consider among these two, which is important means you can assume that it is time. Okay, so I let, let me go through the definition. So we do analysis of algorithm to do a performance comparison between different algorithms to figure out which one of them is the best. So assume that I wrote an algorithm and you wrote one algorithm. Okay, so mine is working with respect to time, it is faster, but yours is taking more time, but the space, space consumption of yours is faster. Sorry, space consumption of yours is low. Okay, so basically your application will work very fine in where there are some kind of issues with space, like whenever you are working with microprocessors, microcontrollers, there you will be having very limitation of space like 100 KB, 1 MB, 2 MB, 10 MB, 15 MB like that. Only those kind of codes can be stored. So in that situation, yours will be the best. And when we are using a normal computers, we'll not be considering a space a lot because we'll be having a RAM of 4 GB, 8 GB, 16 GB like that. So hence, we can say that space complexity is a bit neglected in most of the cases. Okay, so even space complexity is really important in some kind of smaller units. Okay. Okay, so this is just the analysis. So basically to decide which algorithm is doing best, we will be doing the analysis with respect to time, speed, bandwidth, register, registers and power consumption or power usage. Okay, so basically space is nothing but the main memory space. Please don't consider that uh, I am having a 1 TB hard disk. So that doesn't come under space. Basically when a program is running, it will be running in the main memory. So you need to consider the main memory only as the space. Okay, so basically analysis can be done for an algorithm in two ways. So the first way is Austri, Austrium and independent analysis. Okay, so I cannot pronounce this properly. So according to the pronunciation, please pronounce it. Okay, so the first type, let us go through the first type. So basically here you will be writing the code first, then you will be analyzing it. Okay. So you will be first writing. So if you want to remember, so initially A is there. So initially most of the people don't know that whether to write the code or to analyze it or what to do. So basically they used to write the code first. After that they used to analyze. Okay. So in independent, first they will analyze the idea or the algorithm which they want to write. And after that they will start writing the code. Okay. So even by observing, you can say that this is not so feasible now. We want these kind of algorithms or these kind of process, right? Okay. So now let us go through the first step. That is nothing but experimental or upstream analysis. So in this analysis of the algorithm, after it is converted into code. So for code, you will be doing this analysis. Okay. So you'll be understanding the disadvantages and advantages. Don't worry about that. Okay. So analysis between two algorithms can be done by running them with the different inputs and seeing which one takes less time. So basically whenever a student or a kid is doing a program, so they will be under, they will be seeing these kind of analysis. So he'll be writing a code for some kind of small program. And in most of the compilers or online compilers, you'll be getting the compilation time, execution time, run time and all those things times, right? So he'll be noting them and he'll be comparing with his friends one. And he'll be saying that my algorithm is faster, but there are many kind of disadvantages in these kind of analysis. Okay, so the major advantage is we get the exact value or value of the time. So 
if you use some kind of website for c compiler it will be saying the compilation time took 1.101 second so it is very precise for that particular program so that is the reason why it will be giving this is the only advantage in this experimental okay so now let us moving on let, let's go through disadvantages okay so the disadvantage is that the final result depends on the background softwares and hardware programming language even the temperature of the room okay so basically when you are doing these kind of experimental analysis so if your friend is having a gaming laptop or any kind of advanced laptops so those will be really fast right so even they take in 0.05 seconds even in that range of fastness they will be compiling or executing a code whereas a normal common use computers take around 1 second 1.1 like that so it completely depends on the hardware components okay and even on a normal computer if you are running something in the background like you are doing video editing or copying files or any kind of things it will take more time so it completely depends on something like it depends on the software hardware and everything so even programming languages so basically if you write some code in c or in python they both vary in times in space and time complexity okay so i hope everyone got a clear idea on the experimental so now let us go through a priori or independent analysis so this is what is really important so here we do i told you we will be first analyzing it and then we will be writing or converting it into a code okay so we do analysis using the asymptotic notation so we'll be discussing about this these are really important guys don't worry we'll be discussing in our future lectures okay and mathematical tools of algorithms that is before converting it to the program so before converting it into the code we will be writing the we will be doing the analysis okay so here we evaluate the performance of an algorithm in terms of input size we calculate how does the time or space will be taken by an algorithm increases the inputs by increasing the input size okay so we will be increasing the input size and we will be checking whether how much time or how much space it is taking okay so we select an algorithm which is best in long term as increasing in input so i'll be just giving you a small example okay so assume that you wrote two algorithms so this is just for example guys we'll be discussing about these things in our future in our future lectures don't worry so assume that an algorithm is running like this so it is constantly or slowly increasing okay so another algorithm is in this way and it just bulk directly up so if you observe till here you'll be assuming that this algorithm is not doing so well this algorithm is doing superb like it's how much slowly it is increasing with respect to time and execution so it is executing faster in less time and inputs assume in this way so number of inputs and the time so even the inputs are increasing the time is almost slow when compared with this right but after a particular time it is increasing to a lot whereas this is continuing slowly only so in this situation you always must make sure that you will be checking with the maximum things like initially whenever we are testing we will be testing with zero input one input two input three input four input five input and we will be considering that it's done okay it's doing well but you should take some random values zero 99 150 thousand like that where there should be a wide varieties so in that way we will be doing analysis so in this way we will be getting the best results when compared with this so that is the reason why i just give you, gave you a small example okay so in the next lecture we'll be continuing with space and time complexity i'll be introducing them and how they are calculated by using a normal method like calculating in terms of steps okay so let us continue in the next lecture thank you thanks for watching